Patrick with Build Your CNC, and I'd like to introduce you to the Vertical Laser XL. XL meaning extra large. This is a vertically oriented laser machine with a massive 4x8 cutting area. We're going to start this demonstration by showing you the machine's movement and fire. The machine is showing the movement that it would make when it's creating an image. The machine slowly develops the image line by line using the Y axis, which is the the axis that this the head of the machine is moving at this moment. And the X axis is only moving slightly for each line. The cutting engraving is being done with this extremely powerful 80 watt CO2 laser tube. Overall machine and the bed has a seven degree tilt, so sheet material will be able to be placed on the surface. If you want something smaller on the actual surface of this, you can create some kind of frame or some kind of jig that would hold that piece. This tilt actually allows the machine to be, have a smaller footprint because if this was a horizontal machine, if it was in a horizontal orientation, it would take up probably about five or six feet in width, where this would only need to take up about three feet or so in width. The orientation of this machine allows you to minimize the actual footprint of the machine on the floor space. It goes up against the, the wall. It only takes up a little bit over two feet, 25 inches along its uh, distance from the wall. The width is 119 inches and then the height is 79 inches. The machine also features sliding doors. And it's designed in a way that it minimizes any air being able to escape from inside here because you want as much negative pressure inside the machine as possible. We also have a a cut in the side that matches exactly the, the entrance that sheets need to be put into the machine. We decided to put the tube on the gantry because if the tube rides with the gantry, then that means the power is always on the gantry and it's close to the, it's really close to the actual end effector or the, the final output of the laser. If the, if the CO2 laser tube was affixed to a part of the machine that it stays in one place all the time, then the power distribution would be different around the entire machine. And you would also get um, a drift with the, the laser. If you have it aligned, all the laser mirrors aligned, and the laser tube was affixed to one position on the machine, then the drift from one mirror to the next mirror, and then to the final mirror, and your calibration can be off from one part of the machine to the, to the next. By putting the laser tube on the actual gantry itself, the alignment is far easier because you're only aligning for one axis and you can omit the aligning the laser from the x-axis. This particular laser tube is a 60 millimeter laser tube. We designed the mount in a way that you can actually fit an 80 millimeter laser tube as well because some 80 watt laser tubes come in 80 millimeter and in the future we're going to be adding the capability of um, up to 130 watts for this machine which will also require the, the power supply being larger so we would have to add a much larger amount for the, for the power supply. To maximize the speed for the, the y-axis going up and down for our images we used a pretty hefty motor for the y-axis, which is generally um, quite a bit more powerful than you would see in a normal laser cutter. You'll also notice the larger motor on the x-axis. We need this larger motor because we're carrying a lot of inertia here on the gantry. On the motion side of the electronics, we're using heavy-duty drivers, and we have a, a 6 amp driver and a 3 amp driver. The 6 amp driver is driving the, the larger motor. The main controller for this is a traditional laser cutter and engraver controller which will accept standard files like curl draw files, DXF files, standard files that any, any laser cutter would accept. The controller uses a 24 volt DC power supply and the main, the main, um, the main motion controlling is powered by a 36 volt 8 amp, 8.8 amp power supply. And the main machine user interface is a panel that is located on the side of the machine where you can access the files that have been downloaded onto the machine. You can control the motion of the machine if you want to um, move the machine in a certain location and then provide an origin. 
or you can reset it to put it back to its home position. You have a couple ways of loading files onto the machine and you can use, it, use a computer to do that and download the files directly to the machine and to that uh, controller or you can use the thumb driver USB drive to add files. CO2 laser has a 10,600 nanometer wavelength and can only cut certain types of materials like wood, all types of wood, many types of plastic. Plastics are actually a lot more absorbent than, um, than most materials for CO2, but you have to be aware of certain plastics off-gassing toxic chemicals. One of the most popular materials to cut is acrylic or plexiglass on this type of machine. You could also etch glass. The CO2 laser will also cut fabrics and other types of flexible materials like leather, rubber, paper, mat board, mylar, cloth. Metals cannot be cut or engraved, but if you coat them with a paint or some other material like Theramark or Ceramark or aluminum that is anodized can also be marked or engraved. Other harder materials such as tile and ceramics, including glass, can be etched or engraved, but they generally cannot be cut with this type of laser. Whatever materials you do cut or engrave, you'll want to do thorough research on what will happen if you do lays on that particular material. Read the MSDS, the material safety data sheet on the material, and make sure you understand exactly what fumes or gases will be produced in the process of lasing that material. The lens, which is positioned in this location, right here, has a two inch focal length. So from this, from the lens out to two inches is where you'll get a convergence of the laser energy. So at two inches it will converge to a point where you get the most intense part of the laser. Generally two inches is what we'll be um, putting on the machines as a default, but if you want something different, we have uh, lengths that range between one and a half and three inches. To cool the water that is contained in the laser tube, we're using a chiller which pumps the water through and it chills the water at the same time. This is the temperature in centigrade or Celsius of the water that is being pumped through. The air assist that is being produced through this tube is an actual small airbrush compressor to produce the, the air coming out of this to provide air assist which will blow away as much char being created on the surface of certain materials and it also extinguishes small flare-ups that may occur on charred areas or on certain materials. To maintain excellent tube and wire management, we're using cable carriers on both the y-axis and up here into the x-axis. The machine will be available in kit form and it will also be available in assembled form. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the Vertical Laser XL. And if you should have any questions or comments, please contact us at buildyourcnc.com. Thank you.